Hi guys, Keith from Divorce the Horse here. And today we're gonna to talk about getting in the Betty for the camping season. It's uh, five days, five days away, and there's so much to be done, and I've done a lot of things. So I'm gonna come over here to the Betty and show you what's going on with the build. So as you can see here, we got the divider wall up. Uh, those are my sconces that I was talking about that I made out of uh, solar lights for your yard. And currently I am working on this shelf over here. Uh, when I bought the shelf, it was just a flat, regular shelf. It didn't have edges on it. And of course, because the walls are bowed inside the van, no matter how much planking you put up under here, you still end up with a little bit of a list. But that's okay, because it makes easier, you know, to reach things when I'm laying down there in bed. This is my bed below there, because uh, they'll slide right to the lip there and be right at the edge where I can get to my glasses, um, my cell phone charger, my phone. Anyway, I found this little adventure sign at Walmart for like $5, and that's what this is all about. It's about having an adventure, you know, taking something negative in my life and turning it around into something positive um, as best I can. And I thought adventure was the best word. So I kind of put my Star Wars guys there, because as you all know, I'm a big Star Wars fan. And uh, basically I just cut wood strips and glued them into place on the shelf to make the, uh, the lip. Not very hard, not very expensive. Scrap wood was free. And, uh, you know, I put an LED light down under there too. So I have a night light uh, when I'm sleeping. Now, as you can see, it's kind of a mess in here because I'm renovating and getting ready for the move in. Uh, there's my easy chair in the back. Can't wait to enjoy that. I will be getting out of here and living in this van uh, May 4th, Friday night, at which time we'll uh, buy my ottoman. And that's where my clothes will be stored. And then um, then we get ready for further builds. Uh, I'm going to have to rip out this roof, like I said, and redo the whole roof because we're putting in solar panels in a couple of months, probably about, I'm going to say mid-July for a solar power system. And a 32-inch flat screen TV will be mounted right over there on the wall. But that's not all. Currently, I am getting my supplies together, my bins for the storage of my things. Um, got this nice little cabinet here. Lots of pull-out drawers for power strips and things like that. Um, and I got this nice little wood box that I was able to hide behind my divider wall there. Yeah, I'm going to keep my spare shoes there, you know, and uh, quite possibly the paper towels because you never know when you need those. So that's kind of what's going on. Uh, kind of organizing, getting ready, getting rid of all the wood stuff that I saved up from the scrap pile and didn't need. And uh, see that spot right there where that platform is on the floor there next to the wheel well? I will be installing a cabinet in about two weeks, a cabinet. And I'm going to show you the cabinet. I got it for free. And there it is, guys. There's the cabinet that's going to go over my wheel well. What do you think? It's going to match the interior, the black curtains, the black trim on the walls, that sort of thing. Um, as you can see, it's, uh, or maybe not see, it's kind of dark. Um, two shelves in there, plus a bottom open shelf, which I think I'll get one of those, you know, cloth-covered baskets and put down there. Maybe, like, hide my munchies down there, stick my uh, DVDs and Blu-rays up in there, because when this is mounted in there, uh, my Blu-ray player will go right on top and then that'll be nice and out of the way and uh, Then I can even put like a candle, you know a couple of candles scented candles there on the top while I'm in the van and It'll just be really nice and comfortable in there Now uh, remember how I had that problem along the side wall of my van I just you know where the planking went down or the uh, plywood went down the side and it left kind of a crescent moon shaped hollow space behind the furlings and it was just driving me crazy I thought maybe I could take a piece of wood you know an oversized uh, piece of wood match it up against the seam trace it with a sharpie from behind cut it out sand it down all that uh, so I bought one should have fit no nope, the curve angle in the wall was too great and it just, I would have needed a really big piece of wood for like a two inch diameter at its widest spot. 
um, I was like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And I did something I didn't want to do, and I felt like I was cheaping out, you know. I wanted nice stained wood and all that other stuff, and I felt I was cheaping out. But I just happened to have something, and I was like, what the heck, if it doesn't look good, I could take it down. And what it is, is that foam that I used uh, back here above my divider to seal off the uh, top there. You know, this uh, plumbing foam that goes around pipes. Menard sells it. It's got an adhesive, as you can see on both sides. Uh, the problem with the wood was it wasn't flexible both ways. It could bend in a little bit, or it could bend to the left or the right a little bit. And not both and I needed a material that would do both well guess what I put this on it worked really well it was like five dollars uh, problem solved gonna show it to you now so there you have it ladies and gentlemen yeah fit right in there just right nice and smooth look at that fit in the cracks the little bolts on the door just kind of made their own little divots where they needed to be made and nothing more and it's nice and you know it looks really decent much better than i probably could have done with a piece of wood so sometimes you know hey happy mistakes sometimes doing it uh a little more cheaper than what you'd wanted to is actually the best option you know and it was the same thing that kind of happened with my flooring um i learned the hard way because I wanted soft carpet through my whole van. So what did I do? I went out and I bought carpet padding and carpet to cover the whole diameter of the interior of my van. And while that sounded like a logical idea at the time, it turned out to be kind of expensive because in reality, by the time I put the um, floor tiles in around the door entries and put the bed in, I had probably maybe a four by six piece of carpeting which I could have bought as a rug for about $45 <laughs> instead of a hundred and whatever I paid for the whole roll of carpeting. Uh, because quite frankly, you don't need the carpeting under your bed. Um, and that's a lot of space. And you know, cause most people just put bins under there, their storage stuff under there. And therefore, you know, once you put the blankets down and everything, you can't tell that the carpet doesn't go all the way under the bed. And uh, just one of those little things you learn as you go along. You know, next time I'll just buy a rug, you know, uh, or or half as much as I think I might need for the whole measurement of the van. Because, once again, you're going to have your cabinets, you're going to have your bed. Um, I really think that putting tile um, near your doors is really a good idea. And I've learned so because, you know, it's been rainy or whatever and I get out from hiking and my feet are muddy. I hop in there, if that was carpeting, my carpeting would be a mess. You know, if I had a rug that I put over my carpeting even, well, that's going to be a mess. <laughs> you know, and it's just, you don't want wet or muddy inside your uh, van, especially when you're trying to make it look, you know, elegant. Another thing I did was I filled in the gap between the wall and the side wall of the van with a blackout curtain. I just basically tucked it into the top up there and used those magnets to hold it in place. That's why it's a good idea to leave some, you know, some bare metal at the top of your van because magnets can do a lot of cool stuff and make life really easy for you. You know, here's some industrial magnets. They run about four bucks a piece at Menards. Um, very much worth it. But, uh, you know, look at the effect of filling that gap with that curtain. And I have to do it on the other side. I haven't put the other one in yet because we have to take this wall out and it's just right now just only bolted to the floor down here. That's the only thing holding it in place. But we have to take that out when I take the ceiling out once again to do the solar panels. Um, a little bit later I'm gonna let the uh, sun set here and I'm gonna turn on the candles in the sconces here and you can kind of get an idea. And then I'm going to show you the uh, beautiful colors of the LED lighting that I put in the front along the floor as my first test of LED lighting in a vehicle. Um, later on, I'm going to take some wall trim and run it along the top of that side and then this side over here. 
and put some color changing LED light strips in. I'm gonna, you know, buy the same type of material that I use for the roof, the white, which I really like um, because it's reflective and it makes it seem, you know, more open in here. And then when I run those LED lights in here, uh, it's gonna be really beautiful in here at night. You know, if you can imagine a candle on the little black countertop that I'm putting here going, uh, me with my feet up on my ottoman watching television with my wireless headset so nobody can hear me watch television. Remember, stealth camping, very important. And uh, the color changing LED lights on the ceiling. I think it's gonna be really, really nice. This should give you a better idea of what uh, these fake LED candles can do. Um, that's just, you know, a battery operated candle inside a um, blonde solar light that I took apart. And I got, you know, the pair of them with the doors closed. A little brighter over here because it's not dark out yet. But anyway, it kind of gives you an idea of the ambiance that you can create inside your vehicle. And of course, you can see the shelf over here. Is now complete it's glued together and um, let's go take a look at those LED floor lights let's see how those turned out and that's what my LED floor lights look like when they're put in uh, really nice at night especially when it's dark and you're driving it's kind of cool I can change up the colors purple you know pink whatever my favorite is still kind of that darker blue look um, and I paid like $25 for this, uh, plugs right in to your cigarette lighter right there and has its own on and off switch. And, uh, we'll have a link for that item on our YouTube or not our YouTube, but our, um, video in the description, but also on our website, divorcethehorse.com. And, uh, there's my Viper. Gotta love that thing. So. That's about it for this, guys. So, guys, what would you think? Leave your uh, opinions and your thoughts in the uh, description below. You know where that is. Uh, as always, please like, share, and subscribe. I am absolutely grateful for those of you who actually go out and subscribe. Uh, it makes a difference for my channel. I know people are watching. And eventually I'll get to the place where um, these videos will be generating some income for me, which I can then put into further builds because, you know, Next year, we got that big box truck that we're going to turn into, uh, well, let's just keep that as a prize. But it's going to make this look lame because I've got some big, expensive plans for that box truck. So, anyway, this is Keith from Divorce the Horse. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Take care. God bless. Fight the good fight. And uh, until next time.